Do you know that somebody can pray with a tape that you prayed into? You know, these days people look for places where I spoke in tongues. Then they cut it. And then they use it to pray. They say the tongues inspires them. I even heard one that demons used to visit that person. So the person went and cut that tongue. He put it in an empty tree. And if the thing is playing, he noticed the demons will not be far. Ah. So he made sure that there was adequate battery life. <laughs> so the way you even think the grace you have is influencing people, that is not the way. Because what you have is not tangible. How can you measure the influence that it brings? Oh, you, you think it's only when you teach that people are influenced? Sometimes, many more people were influenced just because you sang a song. It is still that grace that you received that was speaking through that song. And he spoke louder, probably in that song, than in the teaching. The objective of the endowment is the maturing of the saints. You are not yet anointed if you cannot influence. And the influencing we are talking about is not the kind of military cantonment um, type influence. Influence is at the highest peak when people are influenced without knowing it. <laughs> that means you are not manipulating them. All along they had the liberty not to be present with you. And you never made it stringent for them to leave. But they couldn't leave because there was an influence. And that influence, because they stayed under it, some were delivered. Some were healed. But that's not the best that the ordination can do. Yes, they were delivered. Yes, they were healed. Glory to God. But beyond the healing, the influence is still relevant. It's not like a hospital where people go only when they are sick. And then when they become well, they are discharged. This influence, after it breaks the yoke on your life, it is still relevant. Not, not, not just that it keeps it. It begins to make you into a man that you were not. So it's in measures of maturing that we can estimate the grace that is on a man. And this first point that was mentioned here is a, an all saints point. So in this matter, even the evangelist is not an outdoor messenger yet. I will show you when the evangelist becomes outdoor. In this first matter, all of us are in-house capacity building agents. The proof that you have met with an evangelist, the only valid proof is that you, your heart was punctured with a level of urgency that is in the realm of the spirit to bring men into the kingdom of God. If that is not what you live with, it's not an evangelist that you met. The person probably has a title, but he doesn't have grace. And right now, part of what God is doing is moving us away from titles. We are looking for authenticity. We are looking for where grace is because that's the only thing that can change the world. It is not true that you met a prophet if at the end of the day you don't become an intercessor. If at the end of the day you don't become an intercessor, it's not a prophet you met. You met a performer. Because in his performing, he doesn't mature. The secret behind the revelations a prophet has is his commitment to intercession. Are you with me? Yes, so when you begin to operate in the capacity of priesthood, then your receptacle is healed and your capacity to perceive things in the realm of the spirit becomes a current reality. So if you met with a prophet, the culture he will expose you to is a culture of prayer. You cannot but become an intercessor if you met a prophet. And one of the attractions that will end, make you end up being an intercessor is that you will lost after his revelation, his ability to pick things. That lost is godly. That one is godly. 
That's what the Bible calls covet. <laughs> oh my God. That's the only sense in which the word covet is used positively. So when he comes with his revelations, say, say, if I can pick like this. Yes, it, God is already advertising a product. And when you see that the engine room that produces this result is prayer, you, you sign up. It's not as if they tell you that prayer is easy. You know it's hard. But you are not leaving the place of prayer because there's something your soul has converted. So if you don't end up an intercessor, it means you have not met a prophet. You met an entertainer. You met a man on a stage that performs. And those days in the, in, in the 80s, we had a team that they called circus. They train lions and gymnastic people. And they do imp imp impossible stunts. And we applaud them. Preachers of our time have become men on the stage. Men that perform. Men that think that is oratory prowess, diction. It is linguistic capacity. That is what ministry is. The objective is what my turn. And your level of compliance will be measured in units of maturity. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. You have not met a teacher if you are not wise. Because the Bible is a compendium of the thoughts of God. That is the smallest molecule of distilling the mind of God. What you have as scripture. God has brought the molecules of his wisdom to the smallest unit. And that is what scripture is. I hope you know scripture does not deliver you from Holy Ghost. Huh? You are not, you are not with me. There is a difference between the written word and the living word. The purpose for the written word is to give you wisdom. The purpose of the written word is to have a fundamental basis of judging things. The purpose of the written word is to give you a means to see God's eye view on every matter. The Bible says that from the days of that youth, thou hast learned the holy scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto soteria. Soteria, as used in that scripture, which is the Greek word translated as salvation, has 13 meanings. It means that if you have learned the Holy Scriptures, you should have received salvation in 13 areas. Are you, are you there? So, and the fact that you know the written scriptures doesn't mean that you don't need, need the living scriptures, the living word. The living word of God is what God is saying now. It's the breath of God for now. It's the wisdom of God for now. The living word of God is directive. The living word of God is, is pointing to solutions. The living word of God gives you a prescription of what you should be doing in order for you to come out of a situation that wants to prove that the word of God over your life is false. Are you there? But you see, if you meet a teacher, his duty is to equip you with wisdom. The wisdom that you can trace in scriptures as revealed by the thoughts of God. So the proof that you have met a teacher is that when we see the way your life is ordered, the man walks with a pool of unbelievers in the bank, and at the end of the month, there is an, a part of his income is separate because it tight. The reason why he's doing that is because he was taught the wisdom of God. You are not with me. <laughs> are you there? You will find him set his alarm for 5 a.m. So that he can wake up and exercise his spirit for at least one hour before he goes to work. The reason why he's incorporating that into his 24 hours as a discipline is because he was taught, he met a teacher. A teacher is the most cerebral 
the most cerebral minister in the fivefold. The reason why is he has to be cerebral and logical. Because if, are you there? If you find a prophet and a teacher, they are not likely to agree on many things. And that disagreement is godly. It is the battle for, for balance. It's a godly disagreement. May the Lord give you understanding. He's a very logical fellow. Because having studied the Bible, he is almost tempted to think that he can generate mathematical formulas from scripture. Because of the parallels that he will see in the Bible. And the anointing allows him that leverage of logic. I'm, I'm telling you that if you wear an anointing, eventually it will shape you. Eventually. You are not just aware yet. You will become a certain kind of person if you allow the anointing to establish its protocol on your life. When you find Christians that are foolish, I, I'm, I want to give you new eyes and new lenses, spectacles, to view believers and to see what is lacking. They have, they have not experienced the ministry of a teacher. So there's no logic that establishes regiments in their lives and their lives and their progress cannot be measurable. He's just in church, hovering like a rolling stone, hoping that things will change, that things will. No, the teacher will tell you, things don't change anyhow. That things, that's what my pastor used to tell us, things work for those that walk the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the teacher will now use the yardstick of things that are working as his measurement of your compliance. Because from the in the from the philosophy of the teacher, if it's not working, you are you are you are ignorant. So you hear a teacher say things like if you are not informed, you are deformed. But the teacher that said that one. Is ignorant of the fact that it's not information you give people. People that you want to mature, it's not information you give them. You have information on, on uh, chat. Um, uh, you have information on Google. How much has your life changed? Today, you, with the click of the button, you can access any information on any matter whatsoever. Is it really information that changes people? No. Is understanding. Reading that daily, reading that newspaper, listening to CNN will not give you understanding. But it will give you information. You know the details about the war in Gaza? You know the details about what is going on in this country, in that country? That's information. The one that has the capacity to transform <laughs> is not raw information. Are you there? So, Part of the duties of the teacher is to take you on a journey from information to understanding. You see, that journey is not a physical journey. The kind of journey that Abraham had to make without a map. When God told him, that I will take you to a land that I will show you. This journey from information to understanding is a journey that the teacher himself cannot single-handedly take you through. Because in order for you to have understanding, you must meet with the Spirit. That's why it is possible for all of us to hear a message. Six people in the hall took off like a tornado on the account of that message. The reason why they took off is because they, they came to the realm of understanding. The rest just received information. I will show you, if we have the time, all through the book of Psalms, you will hear the cry of David. Because he had information, but he was crying for understanding. You so many times give me understanding, and I shall leave. That thing you heard is not life applicable until you come to the shores of understanding. So, if we see your life and it has no wisdom, you have not met a teacher. You get that? Are you with me? Those of you outside, can you hear me? Please, stay with me. You have not met your, met your teacher. And Jesus knows that you need to meet all these people. 
in order for you to be thoroughly furnished. Which of the ministry groups have I not talked about? A pastor. Ah. Satan knows that you will gain mileage the moment you give your life to Christ. So what he does is that he ensures that before you meet Jesus, even though his desire is that you don't meet Jesus, but Jesus is too strong. He, some of you will meet him. So because he knows some of you, even the which is in the covenant, as he's educating them, he knows that some of them will meet Jesus. He knows. Him. So what do we do? Yeah, you, you are not with me. The heartbreak that Satan has is that even among the wizards, they are chanting in the night. When he appears in their midst, he knows that ah, Jesus will still take from here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus will still take from among this one. So what he does is that he tries to entangle your life so much and to give you some indelible marks especially in your soul so that even if jesus eventually snatches you he would have twisted you so much that it would be easy for him to deceive you thereafter for instance you will believe that in our family they don't marry huh. and as long as you have that mindset it is easy for a deceiving spirit to even talk you out of a relationship that has prospects. And those two things took place when Satan had authority because he was not sure whether he could keep you for long. Then you now meet a pastor. A pastor is nothing in himself but the grace that he carries. is so restorative in, in nature. So restorative. Do you still remember the scripture that says the spirit of the Lord is upon me? For he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the meek. I think, give me the, the Isaiah equivalent. That is Isaiah 62 or 61. All right, let's go there. Let me show you what God uses a pastor to do. When we are finished, then I will show you two things. Then we'll close. You see, if we want to really come to Kaduna, and in fact, indeed, we need to come. We need time. For what I have to give you is, is much. It's so much that we need time to take it. Are you with me? We need time. And the man on the console has not found the scripture. Okay. He has abandoned the, the place. The only challenge I have when I travel around are the people that manage this, this thing. They have their own mind. Sometimes I wonder if they are for us or against us. Or, or in between. Hallelujah. It's because I'm saying it now that I move. And I've, I've seen like that in London, like everywhere, everywhere. They are all, they have an association that is... Only the Lord Jesus will have mercy on us. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't say it like that, they won't wake up. You just think he has died. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. This is a pastor. He, he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. So for some of you, what Satan did was that he broke your heart 14 times. So the particles, even left with the particles of your heart. So that the day there is an attempt to bind it or discover that there are some clusters that are out. That means they, it's easier for the heart to break than for it to be mended. So through those cracks, Satan will come and be whispering, whispering, even in marriage. As because there was a damage that Satan administered with the hope that even if you are taken away from him, he will still have the handle of control over your life and your destiny. So God crafted an anointing. An anointing that has the capacity to an announce 
good tidings to the meek. It has the capacity to bind up the broken heart. It has the capacity to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Next verse. Forget about that first aspect to proclaim the acceptable way of the Lord. It's not for this class. And the day of vengeance for our God is not for this class. It's in another class. To comfort all that more. Yes? How does he comfort them that more? He does it in three ways. One, to appoint unto that more Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. It means that the moment that one that is mourning comes into the house of God, what God has in mind is to take the person to the realm of beauty through an anointing. Most times, when the people come to us, they don't understand that this transformative oil takes time to produce beauty. When they come, they come with the haste from whence they came. Instead of them to find the redeem of the oil. Are you there? The oil has a redeem. And even the pastor cannot drive the oil beyond this redeem. So they are not patient enough to allow the full implication of the baptism that takes place under the influence of that oil to prosper. But if you stay, what will it produce? Beauty. Not because the person is even listening to your teaching. The person is just under your anointing. He doesn't know that a, a, a beauty, a beauty transformation process is already taking place. Were you like this before? Don't, doesn't it surprise you sometimes when you come and watch yourself, the way you chat because I saw the way you did your head like this. <laughs> Nobody taught you how to shake your head like that. <laughs> so, oh my God. See us today. See us today. Somebody would think somewhere that oh, these ones were wise all along. Oh my God. You are, you'd have no idea. We were made beautiful by an oil. I remember we went to a typical English settlement where the only black people there and I preached the gospel there with bright English. I, I bright English language. When I finish, the English people say, Yo, English is too high for us. And that's their native tongue, like Hausa. <laughs> that is their own house. That is. They say, Ah, please. Hey, come. What's going on? You know what happened? It is beauty. It's an oil. Yeah. What schools did we attend? Was it the schools that made us? There is a in fact, in fact, my school, the way I graduated, the university, where I graduated, they called me and gave me an award. I said, come, come. You finish from here. <laughs> that made it like that. There is a beauty. There is a beauty. See me and tender today. See us. Beauty for ashes. Oh. For, because some, some people said and actually burnt them up. It was their ashes that they put inside the sack and brought to church. And they are, the pastors are there pouring oil. Yeah. Pouring oil. that in this arrangement it doesn't matter how battered you are if you stay under that oil what will come out is not emotional is beauty it's each and every one of us that are ministers of the gospel can steward what we we have from jesus with faithfulness and with holy living you will naturally influence people the way no one ever influenced you It's ashes. And out of the ashes, formless, black, the anointing begins to wash it and then colors will begin to come out of ashes. Colors will begin to come out. 
we begin to discover that part of the ashes was supposed to be green and when the oil touches it, it will wash the black and the person that that sister that brother will become is not someone that their parents can recognize the parents know that <laughs> we are not we don't know my mother heard me preach now you know what she said that's not a son i gave it it's another preacher entirely she was at the back it's not what she taught me that made me this the oil of joy for money there is a there is an antidote to money it will bring the oil of joy out of a situation of mourning and brokenness many people do not have confidence in the anointing this anointing that we carry, they don't believe it. But listen to me. You will be doing yourself a great disfavor if you don't believe it. Yeah, believe what you carry. And if anybody makes the mistake to believe you, then the protocol of transforming ashes to beauty starts in the person's life. We, they are not under compulsion to believe you, but the one that can be reckless enough to believe that God put something upon your life the, the engine that processes ashes will start is born. the oil of joy for money. Money, there is an oil. When the oil comes, it begins to craft joy. So that by the time the lady is getting married, all the symptoms of the damage that Satan did to her, you can't find it. When you see the way she's murdering children, you know, no, no, this is not my daughter. It's an oil. So Jesus decides to invest this oil in his ministers. Because he wants his entire clan to be transformed. Part of what God is doing now, in order to finish his work and cut it short in righteousness, is that he gives us more than one oil. So that you can function in the prophetic in the measure because his ministers genuine ministers are not they are few so he gives multi grace function as a teacher can function as a prophet it's because it's recovery time the power of an evangelist upon your life he said when this oil goes to work the oil of joy in the place for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heavens and this is what it makes us that they might be called don't read it quickly trees of right what is a tree a tree is in one place when you begin to water it you can despise it then it begins to grow begins to grow. A time comes where it becomes a marvel to the very person that planted it. Where you will marvel the people that taught you the Bible. Because what has grown out of his life was not what we taught him. So you now discover even though your teachings are great, what is greater than your teachings is the spirit that, that travels with it. Because when that spirit causes something to terminate, even the teacher will say, ah, this is not my work. They become trees. Trees of righteousness, the Bible says. The plantings of God. You, you will now discover that at the end of the day, God will take possession. You, the name of the pastor is not there. He said, yes, this is this one now. <laughs> it's the plantings of God. It means you use the resources of God to establish that person. He's a living, you know, a tree can last for so many years. He's a living witness in the neighborhood that transformation is possible. And because he's in the neighborhood, everybody will be forced to see his example. And his example will judge everybody. He's a planting of the Lord. Be glorified. Can you see, at the end of the day, the purpose of all the oils is to raise the trees to mature the saints. 
let me stop my talk so that we can pray because the way I'm going by 2 a.m. we will we'll still be looking for some scriptures. <laughs> the Lord comes to northern Nigeria to water the plants. His plants. His plantings of righteousness. There is a new favor, flavor of the Christian faith that will come from the north. It is he heavily soaked in righteousness. It is the rise of the Puritans. Yes, the oil of the north is the oil of purity. That they might be called the trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Oh my God. Oh my God. I remember it was Zimbabwe. The stadium was packed full and there were about 10,000, 15,000 people outside was a sea of heads. And after ministering in, uh, in the stadium, um, crippled people were walking of diverse kinds. So I said, let's not forget the people outside. So I took the interpreter and we went outside. And the witches saw me and began to curse me. They caused me bitter curses. I've received curses from witches in Zulu language. If you want to concoct a course, you need to look for an ancient language. I've, they've cursed me with Zulu. They've cursed me with Swahili. Which is broke out with curses. But you know what? They came late. At that time, I was already a planting of the law. <laughs> they, they would have come earlier because I was already a planting of the law. The only thing that my life will produce is to glorify him. It's only the process it can delay. When you become a planting, it's over. Even as they cost me, and I asked for a table, so I mounted that table. And I addressed the demons speaking in them. You need to see the hand of God. I didn't have a microphone because it, the, the microphone was too far away from the transmitter. At that time, I was already a plant. There was nothing Satan could do about it. And that's why the Bible said the purpose of the fivefold is to affect the saints. Is to make every one of these people sitting inside, outside, and standing on the fence, the planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. The hand of God came down. The place shook. It shook. It shook mightily. There is, there is a beauty coming out of your life. The prayer point is simple. I will not stop until I become a planting of yours. I will not stop until I become a planting. A planting of the Lord to give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that He might be glorified. I will not stop, I will keep striving. I will keep gaining momentum. I will keep arising. Yes, I want to be one of the plantings of the Lord. But the Lord will come into the north and see his choice vines, his choice plantings. That day has come. The reason for the oil upon your life, the reason for the investment, is that God will have you become one of his plantings, that he might be glorified.